Okay, we already been through the basics of cloth making. Now we're going to see a, a few more settings for it. Oh, first of all, uh, you, you know you can go back and forth on your animation. That's because Blender saves every little frame of this simulation. It saves on your hard disk. On the same folder where your blend file is saved, Blender will make a blend catch underscore and the name of your blend file. With all the little, if you change the name and you bake again, well, first of all, the 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 old animation will not work. You have to bake it again. And Blender will now make a new folder where all your little frames are. So it's pretty good if you want to share or you want to use a, a render farm, for example, you can just put all the simulation. Uh, frames on the server and let Blender access from there. That's pretty cool. Or you can just do a simulation one day and then go to sleep and the next day you render or so. So let's see how it, how it goes. Well, it's still, it still needs a lot of tweaking. This is just the default settings. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go to the cloth panel see the settings there. The first setting we're going to, to play with is the bend stiff setting. It controls how many or how sensitive our cloth is to wrinkles. For example, if we raise that value, well, it can go up all, all the way to, yeah, to 10,000, jeez. But I just put it on 780 or so, and you can see now that there are not that many wrinkles. They're pretty big. Jeez, yeah, and that doesn't look that real, so let's put it back to something more normal. But if you put it in really low values, you will get a lot of wrinkles. Oh, uh, the other one is the air damp setting, which controls how thick our air is, or how much how how the air affects our our mesh you can see that this is still in almost 200 something frame 220 and still it's falling it's still falling there is no it's, the earth is air is doing a lot of resistance on this mesh so if we lower this value then there will be no resistance there will be no thickness in the air and our mesh will fall and do a lot of crazy things down there as you can see you it's intersecting w uh, with itself so we're going to fix this by going to the cloth collision panel and enable self collisions it's a bit tough for the computer to calculate that so i will lower the, the quality values but now you can see that the that our cloth doesn't interse intersect with itself the default values are okay, but to play safe, we are going to change the minimum distance value up to one. And that way, our cloth will be will have more margin to play with and to not uh, to intersect itself. Much better. Still need some resolution, I think. So let's add some soft surf. Oh, but this time we are going to add the soft surf after the simulation. Before we put it uh, on the top of the stack, so the cloth simulation will have more, more resolution, more vertices to work on. But now we want it. We we are okay with this deformation, but that's why we are going to add our soft surf after the cloth simulation. So Blender will uh, smooth the surface once it's already simulated. Uh, cloth simulated, sorry. Much better. Let's see how it looks in wire. Much better. Oh, by the way, I'm using here, I'm playing with the lowest quality settings for cloth. 
you can see that the enable self collision quality is in one out of 10. The collision quality is one out of 20 and the overall quality for our mesh is four out of 80. It's a lower quality, but it still looks pretty good. So if you need more resolution or more accurate uh, cloth, of course you can high, uh, raise this value, of course. But with the lowest quality, it's already pretty good. So now I change the spring damp value. I put it in uh, all the way to 50. So you can see it's, it's a lot more smoother. And uh, let me check, to fix the screen. Let's take more advantage of the white screen actually. There. The spring value is, in other words, will be like how much our cloth is going to bounce on our surface, how bubbly is. Uh, like there is really smooth how it falls but if we rise this value we lower this value sorry like all the way to zero then make really bounces there you can see that it like almost inflates or something Yeah, it doesn't look that that good. So I made some examples, some little test examples for this. So you can see the different values of, uh, of all these settings with just uh, a little uh, tiny, tiny ball like here. These settings, I like these settings. The by default bend stiff is in 60, so we don't have that many wrinkles. And air damp is in 3, so it's not that light it looks like a, a bit more heavy cloth you can see it takes a little bit to fall it doesn't fall automatically or too fast or something in the next example I'm going to lower this air damp value so you can see the difference there. It will look a lot more light. Check it out. Yeah, it looks like a more a, a much more light cloth. Let's see it's lower now. But I think these settings are really are pretty accurate for this kind of cloth. Well, I don't know if it's a skirt or what is this little red ball wearing, but I think it looks looks better. Now I, I made some other tests with crazy settings, so you can see the difference actually. Like on the next, in the next one, I lower the bend stiff now it's really wrinkly you can see really ugly and it gives some artifacts as well like you can see geez, that really needs an iron now I changed that I raised the air damp and the bend stiff or wrinkle value so it looks a lot more heavy now I did the opposite actually I in increased the, the bend stiff and lower the spring damp so it's really bubbly and it's not really good so oh, I those examples are also available on the DVD as a blend file as well so you can check it something on the on these uh, examples was that some parts of the mesh were uh, were actually being affected by this cloth and some of them were not that is controlled with a vertex group So to make a vertex group we go to edit buttons and press new on the vertex group on the links and materials panel. Well you can press N and you will get this nice floating panel where you can change the settings and just paint over, go into weight paint mode or control tab, it's the same. 
well, that's a bit slow. What you can do to paint all the faces on the same on the same weight, you just go to edit mode while in uh, weight paint mode, select everything. Now just go back to weight paint, press F or go to the painting the F key, hold F key. And if you go to paint set weight or just press shift K, Blender will paint whatever is your active weight on your slider there. It's going to paint in, in all those selected faces. So you can just do that for one and then select some others and just paint a little bit less. So it's a little bit smooth, a little bit, not that much. So now it's just a matter of going to our cloth settings, select pinning of cloth. And since we only have one group, let's name it properly first. Since we only have one group, it's going to be selected by automatically. So select that. Now press play, and it will fall, and it will fall smoothly on the on the top. It will not just go from from nothing to all of it. Oh, by the way, in the cloth, uh, in the vertex group, sorry, the red value is 1. It's going to have a lot of weight. And the blue value is uh, 0. So just have that in mind when painting vertex groups. So as you can see now, first we are going to enable continue physics from the playback menu on the timeline. And now you will see a little bit slower. Well, now I have uh, two subsurfs and everything, so I will just disable that, I think. But as you can see, it's now interactive. I can continue while it's baking. Well, it's not baking, actually. It's just playing infinitely. It will, it will not stop, no matter if you have 10 frames as a frame end or 250 by default or whatever. It will just continue playing and calculating. It will not save it to your, to your hard drive, actually. It's just real-time. So let's remove this subsurf. To play it a, bit, a little bit more faster. And now just play. And as you can see, it's a lot faster now. You can just... The good thing about this is that it's not just, well, it is a lot of fun, of course, but uh, the good thing about this is that you can change all the settings from your cloth uh, simulation just in real time. So just go change them and you can see how it affects the, our cloth in real time. That's so cool. So let's see how it works with Antonio now. <laughs>